as a first non-trivial example of the extraction of the regular branch of a multivalid function, let's consider the following function. f of z equals the square root of 1 minus z squared. It's a composite function of the type of square root of g of z, where g of z function is 1 minus z squared. And according to the general theory, the roots of these g of z functions are the branch points of the initial function f of z. So the roots are z equals plus minus 1. So our branch cast should start at these two points. And the assignment goes as follows. We need to study the analytical structure of f of z function for different configurations of the branch cards. And our first choice of the branch cards would be two downward branch cards. We fixate the regular branch of our f function by natural condition f of 0 equals 1, and we are asked to find the value of our function at points negative 2 and 2, and the residue of the function at infinity. As we mentioned many times earlier, the most efficient way to work with regular branches is the geometric interpretation of the function under the root. And we see that g of z function can be split into the product of two factors, 1 minus z and 1 plus z. And these two complex numbers can be represented by arrows in the complex plane. For example, number 1 minus z is represented by the arrow starting at point z and with the head at point 1. The number 1 plus z is represented by the arrow with the beginning at point negative 1 and the head at point z. So wherever we change the destination point z in the complex plane, these two arrows rotate around the branch points. And here we go, let's find the value of our regular branch at point 2. So our destination point is z equals 2. And according to our general schematic, we draw a contour connecting the reference point and the destination point. The reference point in our situation is 0, the destination point is 2, and the contour would be, say, an upper semicircle. And the next step is to trace back the change of the arguments of the constituents of our function under the root. We see that the arrow representing number 1 minus z rotates in the clockwise direction by angle pi. Don't get confused by the fact that this arrow rotates around its head rather than its origin. If you put yourself into the system of reference connected to its origin, you will immediately convince yourself that in this system uh, the arrow undergoes the same pi rotation in the same clockwise direction. So delta argument of 1 minus z is equal to negative pi. Then arrow 1 plus z. You see that this arrow just sways but doesn't undergo any rotation at all. So the delta argument of 1 plus z is equal to 0. And our g function consists of the product of these two numbers. So its change of the argument is simply the sum of the changes of its constituents. So it's delta argument of 1 minus z plus delta argument of 1 plus z. So it's negative pi plus 0. And it's negative pi. And then we simply use the formula for our regular branch. f of 2 equals the square root of the modulus of the ratio of g of 2 and g of 0 times exponential to the power of i by 2 delta argument of g times the value of our regular branch at point 0. And we obtain the square root of the modulus of negative 3 times e2 minus i pi by 2 times 1, and the answer is minus i times the square root of 3. So now let's study the value of our regular branch at point negative 2. So now our destination point is to the left of the left branch cut. As before, we draw a contour connecting the reference point and the destination point. Again, it's an upper semi-circle. 
and trace the change of the arguments of the constituents of our g function. We see that this time the error representing number 1 plus z undergoes a rotation in the counterclockwise direction by angle pi. So the change of the argument of 1 plus z is pi. While the error representing number 1 minus z just sways a little but doesn't rotate, and its change of argument is zero. And as before, we extract the change of the argument of our g function as a sum of these two changes, which is pi. And we have all the constituents for our regular branch. f of negative 2 equals to the square root of the modulus of negative 3 times e to the power of i pi by 2 times 1. And the answer is i times the square root of 3. And in our next slide, we will proceed with the discussion of the behavior of our function at infinity.